Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Switching gears a little bit tonight, rather than doing the news, uh, we can be updating that a little bit tomorrow, but I want to bring some information to you regarding Isaiah chapter 4. In fact, uh, the other day we were uh, doing a conference there, and my wife, when she was speaking uh, during the live conference for Sister Leora up in Chicago, we were doing this by Skype, one person wrote a comment about the video that we uploaded from that conference and quoted from Isaiah chapter 4 in verse 1. Now let me just read you the verse first. And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Now they took that as being that women would want to get the favor of men. And although the person, no doubt, meant well by it, my wife asked me about it, and of course, God had already given her the revelation on it, and we had the exact same revelation about the Scripture, and then I shared with her even more. It has nothing to do with women trying to get a man to cover them, or seven women to try to get man to cover them uh, because of their sin. It, but it has to do with the very closing hours of biblical history. All you have to do is read the rest of the chapter there. It's only, what, seven verses, I believe, six verses long, and you can really begin to uncover what's actually written. The seven women, though, by the way, are actually the seven churches that you see written in the book of Revelation. Those seven churches are the spirit of the, of the churches themselves, the spirit of the people of the churches. Just like it was in the time of John, all seven churches were present. All seven of those churches had a nature and a spirit about them. And they carried down through the next 2,000 years. And in the day you're living in now, those same spirits still remain. Even the spirit of Laodicea, for example, that we hear about. You had Smyrna, Pergamos, Philadelphia, Laodicea being the seventh one that was a church that is naked, miserable. She's blind and she doesn't even know it. It's kind of sad. We actually did a little series on the teaching of that, who these seven churches are and how they actually are represented today. But what's really kind of odd is notice what the scripture says about it. It says, In that day seven women shall take hold of one man. That man is Christ Jesus. You'll see how you know this in just a moment here. Saying, we will eat our own bread. Well, he is the bread of life. He's the word of God. He said, I am the bread that came down to the children of Israel. I was that manna that they ate. He is the bread of life. But they said, let us eat our own bread. In other words, we want our own doctrine. We want our own way, our own religion, not what God has to offer. We don't want your bread. We don't want your word. We want our word, okay? Now notice what they say next. Saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Well, I might be Catholic. I might be Methodist. I might be Philadelphian, Pergamos, I might be uh, Sardis, I might be, you see what I'm saying? They, they, they want their, they're going to wear their own apparel. They're going to do it their way, not God's way. Not His word nor His way. But then notice what they say next. Only let us be called by thy name, Jesus. We want to be called Christians, by the way. We want to be Catholic and called Christians. We want to be Baptists, Methodists, Pentecostals, Presbyterians, whatever you have you more. Uh, but, we just, but we want to be called by your name. God won't accept. He won't accept uncleanliness. If you're going to accept the name of Yeshua, if you're going to be called a Christian, then eat his bread and wear his apparel. It goes on to say, to take away our reproach, because they know they're dirty. In other words, they need forgiveness of their sins, but they want it their way. But notice, this is how you know exactly what time frame it's speaking about. Look at this verse 2. In that day shall the branch of the Lord, which is Christ Jesus again, the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Wow. You mean to tell me this is also the time frame when the Jews will actually believe Yeshua is Messiah? That's exactly what verse 2 is speaking about. Verse 3, And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be 
called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Wow, what a revival going on. Verse 4, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. What, what do you know? The Lord has washed away their filth. Those seven churches that John writes about in the book of Revelation appear right down here in the very last days we're living in. They're wanting their way, and Israel is getting washed of her sins, and she's taking upon Christ. She's accepting the branch, which is Yeshua HaMashiach. We also find that in Jeremiah chapter 23, by the way, the, the, the righteous branch. See, and so she's being washed of her sins, washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment. What spirit of judgment? The 2,000 years that they were in exile, and not just them, but the house of Israel also being in exile as well for 2,700 years. And the judgments, the inquisitions, the holocausts, the pogroms, everything you can imagine that's happened to the Jews. It was the spirit of judgment was upon them. But now they've been cleansed from that. And by the spirit of, of burning, see? And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud of smoke by day. Interesting, isn't it? And the shining of a flame fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense. It's Unbelievable. God is bringing back exactly, exactly what was there in the wilderness journey. The pillar of fire by night that give them light to see and a cloud by day to shadow them. The Spirit of Almighty God. Verse 6 in conclusion, And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. Absolutely amazing. So see, precious friend that uh, may have made the comment there on, on her own video, and, and as I said, my wife had this exact same revelation. She brought it to my attention. I said, yes, I, I, I realize that myself, and, uh, but just incredible. And then I shared with her the rest the Lord was showing me as well. I said, it's more than, it's, it, I said, but you're right on it. It is the, she didn't think about the seven churches, but she knew that those seven women represented Christians that were trying to take on uh, they were trying to take on that identity uh, of Christ, but they wanted their own way. She realized that, and I'm like, praise be to God. just shows that it's the same Holy Spirit working, and God can do that with anyone that will yield themselves to Him. Anybody that is willing to take His bread and His apparel, He will certainly wash us of our sins. Shalom, Erev Tov. Have a great evening. We are uh, traveling right now. We'll be going with, uh, to meet Sister Edith Neumeyer. Uh, she is an author on, on equality, women equality, and we'll be meeting with her in Germany. And so we're in route to there uh, as, I, as I'm speaking with you now. Anyway, shalom. God bless you and pray for us. I'll be headed back to Israel here next week and uh, ask, for your, uh, ask for your prayers that God give us, give, give us travel and mercies. Uh, we'll go back to the homeland. Shalom.